I am shocked and appalled that so many of you think that somebody with my track record would be incapable of going an entire series without violence. The first thing to point out is that there will be plenty of violence. It'll just be the trees doing it, not our people. And secondly, the violent precept says to shed blood and break bone is barbaric and disgusting. Doesn't say anyone about beating someone to an inch of their life for the club. Well, there is one very slight minor thing that I did neglect to mention yesterday. Now, Petal comes with a whole slew of dryad technology, dryad defenses, dryad sculptures, you name it. And all of those are based on using these dryad seeds. Uh, the problem is you have to implant them into human corpses. So if you just ignore the fact we've got an army of rip and tear dryads, we can beat people as much as we want as long as we don't break bone or spill blood. And then we can implant any corpses with seeds and turn them into genetic monstrosities. As long as you ignore all of that stuff, we're, we're the good guys. And before I forget, we've got to name this place, this horrible cursed tree filled place. For the community name suggestion, a fantastic one. We're going to go for Catharsis. Uh, an inevitable countdown to my mental breakdown. And then the faction itself is actually a stroke of genius. Peace treaty. I mean, it couldn't be any more perfect. Oh, and there was a great mod suggestion as well to include the Elder Scrolls Race Project's Bosma mod. Now, I won't get too much into the Elder Scrolls side of things, but the Bosma, they love trees, they worship trees, they live in trees, but they're also horrific cannibals, much like Petal. Incidentally, if you're interested in the Elder Scrolls, I have a 300 part Elder Scrolls series on the second channel. Ah, I'm wasting my life. But the cool part about this Bosma mod is it allows us to build more natural structures. We can grow walls and weird stuff like that. So that brings me on to the first order of business. I think we need to put down a pretty big perimeter wall. Somewhere that we can clear out all the trees, plant them around it, and be essentially this little compound hidden in the woods. A village hidden in the leaves. So there should now be, within our growing tab here, a wall pod. There we go. Okay, a special pod planted by a skilled Bosma. Not quite. Rapidly grows in size, eventually forming a sturdy wall. Can be turned into a door as well when fully formed. That sounds incredible. We do have to be very careful with growing zones, because bear in mind, if there are any trees adjacent to growing zones, they will just be chopped down with <laughs> with reckless abandon, which is going to be uh, it's going to be great. Kind of thing is something like that. That way, we're getting a couple of the steam vents in there as well. So if winters are really, really bad, we can just huddle around those. Bring it a bit more southerly, maybe to like there. That's pretty good. Then we're pretty close to the mountains, too. I'm going to have to go around all of this, though, and extract these trees. Oh! Oh! <laughs> hey, micromanagement. Okay, fine. You know what? We, we have the extract trees order now, so I suppose we can just go a little something like... A little something like that. Alternatively, this is insane. This is, this is actual insanity. What if we just dig up all the trees? Are we going to be able to replant them in time before they all start dying? What is it, like six days? This is danger. I'm on board. What are you people doing? They're just sitting in the living room, eating jar after jar of... Attending party? No. Oh, it was a feast? Uh, you're having a feast. Oh my god, look at the dryads. <laughs> <laughs> we heard there was trouble, boss. Wow. Oh, this is going to be fine. This is going to be fine. Everyone's worried about the cats, rights, the mechanoids. We're going to be okay. Don't worry. All we need is every single person connected to a tree and all of those trees churning out Glora Dryads. And then, you know, kind of clever use of planting trees and diverting enemies. We can build a hedge maze. That is genius. Nature's kill box, the hedge maze. <laughs> Don't think that'll take off for children's party slogans. Please help me. I've replanted so many trees. The good news is one month later, here we are with all of the trees gone. Now, I'll be entirely honest with you. One or two trees did did die. So we have 1,700 wood now. It wasn't that bad. Okay, it was like 30 trees out of a possible 300. So I'll take that. There is, however, a slight problem. The comment section, once again, in their infinite wisdom, proving me a fool. Ooh, new lovers. It turns out the magical elf bush can only be grown by magical elves we we can't we can't grow it so step one build a wall has been uh, superseded by step zero capture an elf getting horrible flashbacks already this was supposed to be new year new me and who is that milky and twimble is that just milky and everybody now because i think milky and dice also fell in love during the winter uh yep that's that's everybody it's free love man it's a free world full of free love oh we also did have to eat a muffalo i'll be completely honest with you had to eat a muffalo and also a wild boar. But other than that, though, everything was fine. A few trees died and we had to eat a muffalo. That's a fine compromise to get through a, a harsh winter. And don't panic. Even though those trees may have died, we can replant the wood into a lovely hedge wall. And then as soon as we grab a wood elf, we're fine. Everything's okay. The mod won't go to waste. And no, before anybody else asks, there are no mods that allow you to replant trees. Every single one of these fucking things I had to replant by hand. 
Look at this. Do you know how many trees there are there? Episode 2. I hate trees. I also had to get some carrier dryads in too. But to be fair, when we got the carrier dryads, the other trees stopped dying. It wasn't a problem that we could replant them in time. It was just a problem we couldn't actually haul them over there. And at this point, we could always swap the carriers out for ironwood makers. So ironwood has a higher beauty bonus. It's also stronger than regular wood. Lower yield. But I think it's also less flammable too, right? Uh, look. 75% flammability. Yeah. You know what? That's quite nice. Low food. What do you mean low food? L low food. You mean no food. Eat an apple. Okay, that's that's not inspiring much confidence. Oh, shit. Don't feed it all to Pierre. Petal. Oh. Trained in attack. You know what? Fine. Fine. At this point, the dryads are more well-fed than our actual colonists. <laughs> colonists are gathering to celebrate Petal and Milky's marriage in this horrible, filthy, boiling room. <laughs> yeah, no, this isn't weird. This isn't weird at all. Hooray! Colonists is celebrating the occasion. So it turns out that the uh, Ironwood Dryads just kind of bricked the game. So we've got plain old regular Woodmaker Dryads, which is still going to be super helpful, don't get me wrong. Fueling machinery, being able to build campfires. At oh, this point, passive coolers, given that the freezer is 22 degrees C. <laughs> By which I mean, good golly, the trees have regrown already. Wow. Nature truly is a powerful bounty. I hate this game. I hate trees. I hate trees. I hate nature. Is it too late to pivot into full-on Rimmerfella? Is it time for oil already? I've been juggling trees now for two hours? <laughs> it's been two hours. I, I have no idea what that translates to in video length. I'm assuming we're almost done here, which would just be superb. And our final anima nexus. There we are. Oh, and another gift for Twinborn Mink. Milky is now going to marry her. Everybody thought the Petal was the main character. No, no, no. Milky's out here marrying everybody. <laughs> Oh, we got two seeds from that one. Okay, I mean, that's that's fantastic. Means that we're covered for our next recruit that we get. We can have enough room for all of these trees. Perfect, so there we go. Medicine maker is fine, but we can just grow heal root. The one thing we can't do is combat. So I feel like either bark skin or chloras at this point would make a lot of sense. Let's just go all in on the chloras. 1.8 hours a day to maintain. Yikes. Okay, it's getting a little expensive now. Oh, the Marooned Warriors. 189 threat points. Well, they've doubled. Well, over doubled at this point. You got guns already? Okay. Well, then. Let's go, shall we, team? We've got this huge hedge around the base, so they should be a little bit dissuaded by that, even though they could just kick it down in two seconds flat. There's an open route, though, through the mountains. So this is where we can really kind of sneak up on them, hopefully. Let's just kind of hang around behind this corner. <laughs> They'll never see us coming. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, there we are, there we are, there we are. Now, we could turn this into a hedge maze too, like I said. Really scatter the enemies. Unleash the hounds. Okay, brace yourself. Get him, Chlorodryads. Get him, get him, Chlorodryads. There you go, there you go. They're waking up. Took them a little second there. What's going on with Sl Sleepy? Are you good? He's, he's quaking in fear. Oh, well, that's a little anticlimactic. Oh! Sleepy, what's going on with you? Are you all right? Sleep now, sweet prince. You saved this colony. I'm going to name every single dryad, I've decided. We're going to give them names. They're going to get personalities. They're the saviors of this colony. They're not just disposable weapons. They're living, breathing creatures. See, that one's called Yoshi. Let's build a little dryad graveyard. Out here, next to the base. So, um, fire foam poppers? Yeah, that might not be a terrible idea. My grove! How long it took to plant that? Yeah, like, actually fight the fire, though. My god, I don't care if it's home area or not at this point. Of all the play- <laughs> This area, forget about it. Everything else around it, though. Ah, another marriage already, Milky. I suppose you've gone a week without one. That makes a lot of sense. It's slow going, for sure. Relying on the woodmaker dryads to provide all of the wood for the base. But it's it's actually looking pretty good. So I'm swapping out all of the bamboo for these log star walls instead. They fit the theme just so much better. And then I'm very slowly planting a big old layer of trees around the edge of the whole thing. When it comes to expanding it, when we need more room, that's going to be a... <laughs> Complete nightmare. Oh, a gift from the Empire. Five gold. Wow. Bank breaking. That's, that's incredible. Thank you, my friends. Oh, good. Well, that's the entire forest going to burn down then. I can't complain. That's a lot of steel and components. Even if it did kill hundreds of trees, which I'm definitely upset about and not happy to see them go. Oh, no. A mad alpaca. Whatever will we do? <laughs> I mean, look, we must be doing something right. Our people are so happy. Are you guys good? Uh, no recent conquest. Very happy about that. Loraxian style surroundings because of all the wood and the wood panels. That's quite nice. So human food plan, anima nexus connection. Just a little bit sad because we haven't done any of the ideology and stuff yet. Okay, we'll start working on that now. We didn't help some refugees, nor have we 
Oh, drugs. Oh, that is entirely my bad. So we do start with Psycho and Smoteleaf. Why don't we start easy and, and, and move on to Psychoid and Luciferium, things like that later on. Because we do have this incredible mod that adds also bongs for every type of drug. <laughs> okay, I've got a weird idea for the, for the kind of temple, for the ideology. You know what? I actually quite like that. And this does count as a ritual room and everything, right? Yeah. It counts as a grove, a mediocre grove. But you know what? I want a grove. I'm happy with that. Doesn't count as having it disrespected or anything like that. So let's go ahead and set up our begin chill. <laughs> let's go ahead and set up. Of course, we've got to go for Lorax, leader of the colony as Petal. Yeah, this one is uh, this one is definitely a bit of a trip, but you can't deny it definitely fits the theme pretty well. Twimble Mink, did you just lay an egg? Oh, the Crusher turned up too. That's good. Glad we've got your expertise on board, my friend. So then we've also got Head and for Plant Specialist. Gives a 70% plant work speed and a 30% plant harvest yield, but disables everything else. Then we've also got, uh, oh, that's, it. oh, yeah, of course, Dryad Speaker as well. I guess Dice, given that Dice is the botanist, Dice has the ecologist trait that already gives plant harvest yield. You make perfect sense for that. You've already hit 17 plants. Well, I mean, to be fair, all we've done is, you know, is just handle plants, really. <laughs> Shock horror. Base built entirely out of plants gives good plant skill. Who could have guessed? So that is plant specialist for little dice breeze. And then finally, I've got to give Dryad Speaker to uh, Milky Truckles. Okay. Nice. I love the fact that it's called Grove, too. That's quite cool. Oh, God. Terrifying John's in there. John, we need you to keep calm. How much wood have we got from our dryads now? So the next thing I want to build, I think, is just going to be plain old regular stockpile workroom combo. Give me that right there. Let's throw this around the steam vent so we can keep it warm during the winter. And it's only taken me, I mean, how long exactly? Uh, 86 days since our arrival. We have bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, I am a reward expert. Thank you for noticing. Ooh, the Warriors of Angry. 355. Okay, well, this is ramping up fast. Why are you dressed like a fucking clown? Why <laughs> have they all got cat ears? <laughs> wow, that's actually quite a lot. A seven. How many chlorodrides have we got? Can I turn some into... We've only got six bloody chlorodrides because I turned the rest into woodmakers so that we could you know, actually build a base. Even then, it's not really going swimmingly. This is the, uh, the stop power we've been working on for the best part of the season now. Okay, little dryads, it's your time to shine, my friends. Pierre, Jimmy, Gertrude, on the bat lines, please. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, my plan worked. They're staggering over the rocks. This is great. Split them up, and then, and then, wait, hold, hold, hold. Sick em, boys. Nice. Nice. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. Ready? Hold. Or, or just, you know, just just get him. Just get him, I suppose. Just like, well, actually get him, though. Oh, I didn't actually mean to kill him while he was down, but that's fine. It sent a message. That's fine. Is that really it? We killed two of them. They're already gone. Cowards. I say cowards. We've got a bunch of horrible Resident Evil flash monsters out here ripping them apart. Gotta make sure I have somewhere for them to be tended, though. That's my only concern. Sure, we can make healing pods, but we might as well patch them up with our doctors if we can. Boroxada. Oh, good at crafting. Hey, that could be quite nice. Perfectionist is also very, very good. Gives them higher quality. Insatiable. I mean, honestly, you'll fit right in. Literally, literally, you'll fit right in. And then dog person, which works fine, because we've got plenty of dogs. <laughs> Although, we don't have a prison, so that is a slight concern right now. Uh, let's just slap down, slap down one of those in there a second. You'll be fine. You've only been ripped and torn by a bunch of horrible flash monsters. What's that? It's a hoe for a farmer. The hoe is the most basic tool for farm work from the faction hippies mod. Oh shit. Hey, that's quite nice. Oh, that's pretty terrible. Okay, little dryads. Sally forth. Let's see if we can blow this thing up somewhere where it won't burn everything down. Actually, if we can take it on the other side of the road. This may surprise you to learn, but there is method to my madness sometimes. I've left specifically two blocks of road there to act as a nice fire break, so we made the base as big as possible without running the risk. Okay, okay. Uh, Dryads? I was just gonna run straight past. I've made a horrible mistake. You know what? Let's get everybody ready to firefight, and let's just detonate it in the base. Oh, Pierre! Pierre, you brave fool! <laughs> That might be the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Good lord. I've still got COVID. This shit is going to kill me. The sight of seeing Pierre rolling around on the floor on fire is just... 
Oh, I shouldn't laugh, but how can you not? Oh, you break down that door. I dare you. Are you, are you coming out or what? Okay, yeah. That's good. Sometimes all you need is a good deterrent. Oh, no, she's going for it. Boar. Come on. Oh, for God's sake. No. <laughs> wow. Um... We may have gone a little overboard there, I will admit. 6,000 smoke leaves. I mean, it deals with one of the big sadness that they've got going on, which is high life missing and all the trees ravished. I accidentally cut down a tree. What do you mean a horrific number of trees? It was like two over here. Okay, either way, auto bong. Is that something we have to research? Oh, uh, there it is. Oh, that's a burn bong. No, 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 we need the auto bong. I love that we've got absolutely nothing else. Nothing dryadic, nothing anima base. We're going, we're going straight for the auto bong, of course. Auto door. Auto cannon turret. Blowback operation. Microelectronics? Wait, really? It is! <laughs> Forget your trade beacons and your research tables. No, no, no. We're here. We're here for we're here for culture. So we've pretty much finished with the stockpile room slash workroom. Put a few more leaves on the outside there to help give it that nice rustic feel. Let's throw down a couple of research benches then, huh? We're back to Windsor already. Wow, that went fast. I'm really glad the storytellers are like pulling their punches too, if you notice that. We've had barely any raids this entire time. Is this really what base game remote is like? I mean, chances are something is horribly broken, but this is this is an alright pace to say that it's taken us this long just to get basic structures down. No, I've gone pretty hard on the vegetable stocks this time around. Want to make sure that never again will we eat meat. Except for Pestle, who has to eat these lentils because they count as a meat substitute. But even then, I still think we're well within our, our vegan lifestyle with that. Although in hindsight, I might have gone a little bit too far. Good lord. So I'm putting down these lawn plots in the grove because they give a beauty bonus. So of course, given that we're doing rituals in here, that makes makes kind of perfect sense. Eventually, I'd love to get the greenhouse roofs, the transparent roofs that would just like crops grow naturally in there. That would feel a bit more on brand. But for now, AstroTurf the whole thing, I guess. Boar is fully healed. Wait, have I even got a warden? You fool. There's no wonder Boar tried to kick the door down. He's <laughs> still being fed, though. Oh, by like a nurse. So we've been waiting for Boar to drop of malnutrition. Then we've been feeding Boar. That's very, that's very magnanimous. Now, you might be wondering, how are the bees coming along? Dead. Dead is the answer to that. Last winter was so harsh, our people had to eat meat. The bees weren't going to survive it. Ooh, hello there. I mean, we don't need one right now. We already have a spare, but we might as well go and grab that anyway. We are breaking speedrun records today, my friends. We finally got two research benches down. Please hold your applause and don't all clap at once. Do we We can just go right for that, right? Yeah, because we've got electricity as a starting research. Who do we make research then? I guess it's down to Dice, seeing as Dice apparently has nothing else to do right now. That's kind of perfect timing. A nice and toasty 30 degrees scene there. Okay, might want a little hard on the campfires, I will admit. My god, it's horrifying. <laughs> I will never get over that. They just descend on it like a swarm. It's it's kind of frightening. Ah, oh, boar. Hello, my friend. I'm not looking at these as, you know, kind of resources. They're here to live their lives and be free and in nature and naked. But I am looking at Boar and I'm thinking, boy, that's another five Chlorodryads ready to go. Uh, sir? Threat points 511. Well, that doesn't seem fair. I think I'll go ahead and take the executive decision to cancel that mining operation. Thank you. Oh, that's not that bad. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know how to assess how good the Chloras are at combat because it's quite hard to quantify right i guess this is a good test like i roughly know what we need in terms of manpower to take that out so let's send them in and then when i've done a tiny little bit more testing with the dryads just to see how they handle then we'll rename them but i don't want to be like firing them off into the front lines and getting them get them murdered on mass just to uh <laughs> just to test them out seems a little bit cruel hey there we go oh shit Okay, sleeping on it a little bit, I think. Maybe maybe a lot better than I thought. Hey, uh, go go catch that one. Hey, don't let him get away. Damn. You know what? I was worried, but these guys are they're holding it together. Hive piece, what do we do with that? We can use it to make a hydro jelly farm to produce insect jelly. Oh. We'll produce insect jelly and glow pods after a time. Sounds incredible. And I believe that our people are actually fine with eating insect jelly. Like, insect jelly and honey specifically are the only things that, that are kind of a, an animal product they're okay with. Oh, you fool. <laughs> oh, you got to find the big guns now. Get him, Pierre. 50 steel, 20 cloth. Okay, 25 wood and two hive pieces. So let's go ahead and swap out the red line tools because I think I went a little bit overboard on that. Let's throw down cotton here instead and just see if we can keep those things until, I guess, Nate's growing season swings around. The Wanderer joins. Okay. Don't be a tracer. Clove. That's that's kind of close to clover. All right. I'll allow it. Welcome. I mean, it's going to allow it anyway, right? 
Clove, the tactician, you any good? Uh, not massively. Chemical fascination, you know what? I get it. Hard work is okay. Coward's not great, but we haven't got to worry about combat. So in hindsight, you're actually okay. Skills though, uh, shit, like really just terrible. And please, for the love of God, take those clothes off. Have some decency. Oh, balls. Well, now I'm going to have to build another bedroom as well. <laughs> how dare you? I've really got to ask, how on earth are we building light balls and loudspeakers without microelectronics? The crusher has a tree growing out of his face. So it's the dead of winter. There is really very little to do. Our farms are fallow. Our bees are <laughs> all horribly dead. But you know what would be nice in winter? That's right. A giant fuck off hot spring amid the drugs fields. Problem is, apparently the only thing we can build out of is jade. We'll try and avoid using stones where possible because that's not natural. Who, who, no one's out there finding stones in nature. It's all man-made. Terrifying John? No. Where did he go? Where is he? John, what happened? Pierre? That's fucked up. Are you not eat grass? We're supposed to be vegan, Pierre. Oh, he's gone. Pierre has devoured terrifying John Hole. Maybe that's for the best. Oh. Enemy is now neutral. The big league kinship. They consider you neutral and will no longer attack you because goodwill. What is default goodwill with them, I wonder? Oh, shit. Is it because of the peace talks? Because that was a weird. That was a weird coincidence. Otherwise, Ronto, the cave builder, leader of the big league kinship, has invited you to peace talks in an abandoned castle near here. That's not really near here, is it, Ronto, you prick? Who's our best diplomat? Who do we send out? I mean, I, I, as far as I recall, from the event, you get more respect if you send your faction leader. I can't risk Petal. But she is also our, I mean, our only character good at social. We send Petal atop the back of the crusher. It's confident, but firm, but also respectful. Is she not just going to freeze to death? Wait, what's her, what's her cold tolerance? Because that seems like it could be a little bit, a little bit dangerous. Uh, minus 40. She's good. Send her out. I genuinely thought Clove for a second there was talking to the Dryads. <laughs> well, she will be in a minute because it's her time to connect to the Anima Nexus. And I suppose we could always connect Petal up to multiple Anima Nexus trees. Oh, shit. Hey, that's nice. 2.1 hours a day. Oh, Clove's not very good. Uh, get me some... It's a mad idea. Bear with me on this one. Maybe let's go for some Chloras. <laughs> <laughs> what benefit do they get from Grandland Supremacy? 20% consciousness, 40% manipulation, massive blunt and sharp armor. That's nice. Injury healing factor is bonus. Oh, they get shooting accuracy? Huh. Oh, hey, that's nice. Trade consoles so that we can finally talk to all these other factions. Prepare those peace talks. Do a little bit of diplomacy here. We've got access to all the future advanced tech lined up with the advanced research bench. But perhaps most importantly of all, Autobong. Oh my god, it's 150 watts. The human power generator has only put up 100 each. Everybody's gonna have to pedal. <laughs> a pedal power bong might be the most hippie thing I've, I've ever heard. That's phenomenally on brand, actually. The only remote colony with 100% carbon neutral bongs. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Uh, did I miss something? Um. <laughs> oh, relations with the Bigley Kinship have changed from 1 to 52? Oh, so all you had to do was just walk there. Huh. Well, there you have it. Well, that was worth that was worth the journey, for sure. Yeah, like 51 opinion, I'll take that. I guess we are allowed to wear hats, aren't we? I feel like I need to commit to making the most esoteric hats possible. Like we rock up to the front line of the battlefield completely butt naked with an army of dryads and then like a single legendary cataphract helmet. Dice, I think you've done it, my friend. 560 granite blocks. Where do you want to place the hot spring? We, we could fit it in there if I move the walls out, but I, I, already, I already don't want to do any more building. <laughs> My spirit is broken. We're going to drop it right there amid the smoke leaf fields where we can look across at our dryads living their lives, frolicking in the flowers. And then we get solar panels and wind turbines. What, well, I guess probably not wind turbines given the amount of fucking trees. When we get solar panels, we'll slap one of those down. We'll have an auto bong right next to the hot spring. This is going to be a modern paradise. This is going to be an absolute paradise. And I mean, look at their moods. You can't deny I've got to be doing something right. Look at this. I don't think I've ever seen people so happy in RimWorld. Have I really been doing it wrong this entire time? Boar, I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting about you. Probably should have assigned another warden while Pessa was away, huh? That's kind of my bad. You good, though? No. <laughs> no, you're really not. Medical emergency? I assume that's Boar. Boar, you can wait. We're working on the hot spring. Don't worry, Boar. Only a few more seconds. There you go. What's wrong with you? Why are you so sad? 
Malnutrition, for God's sake. And for purely aesthetic reasons, let's expand the Smotley farm around the edge there. There you go. <laughs> I can't believe that works. <laughs> That's it. Come on. Everybody gather round. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Battle. I'm trying my hardest, damn it. You know what we need? Batteries. And we're not we're not playing with semi-random research. We can just queue that up. Wow. Freedom. Uh, this is this is true. Sweet freedom. And here we have our new allies, the Bigly Kinship here with, what is that, like a zoological trader? It absolutely is. Don't really want to buy any dogs, thank you. They're, I mean, they're obligate carnivores. I can't really help you out with that one too much, pal. Eat them lentils? It seems a little cruel to raise a Labrador on lentils. <laughs> well, the Woodstocks are doing really, really nice. And I've also got a load of fiber corn growing too. That's not killed off by the winter, so... I think realistically, given the raid points that we've been up against, let's swap some of these guys out for Chloras again. Oh, it's like they're hiding. Hiding from the horrors of war. An extracted tree just died! Damn it! Oh, we were doing so well. Two of them died. There's nothing else for it. Begin a public execution. <laughs> obviously, obviously we're not going to do public execution. Be a little extreme. We could have a leader speech, though. To cement what a fantastic day for the colony this has been. Well, everyone, it's been a difficult start, a difficult couple of days here waiting for trees to be dug up and replanted and dug up and replanted. I'm going to be dreaming about replanting trees. But we've done it. We, we are through the looking glass. We were on the other side of that storm. And now we have ourselves, look at this, incredible work. We have ourselves this, this paradise, this Garden of Eden. With all the drugs and bicycles and dryads and hot springs you could ever want. With delicious lentils that count as meat, but potatoes and rice and corn. And eventually, bees. Bees that aren't killed en masse by the winter. And a corgi. Hello, corgi. I'm not going to buy you, corgi, for your own sake, because Pierre will probably swallow you whole. This is only the beginning. We can only dream of a day where the autobongs will run 24-7 without the need for Milky and Twinborn Mink to sit on a bike all day, every day, pedaling non-stop. There will be a day when our colonists can bathe amid the fields of Smoteleaf and enjoy true freedom in this world. And realistically, that day will probably be tomorrow because we're not using semi-random research for a change. Thank you all for being here for the Avengers of Petal and Friends for today. Our current goal remains, I suppose, kidnap an elf so that we can grow walls naturally without, without hedges. I haven't really thought that through. We can grow walls naturally without needing to gather that wood from our dryads beforehand or anything like that. It'll be a little more convenient. I think it'll also feel a lot more, a lot more natural, bizarrely enough, to say that there is something more natural than a, a hedgerow for walls. The real MVP of the show, completely out of nowhere, though, those peace talks with, with the Big Lee faction. I mean, it's it's not really working towards the end goal too much. We're trying to broker for peace between the factions. There'll be other peace talks associated with that, going there and trying to mediate between them, making sure they're friends. But I think that's a great start. If we can ally with everybody else, maybe we're setting an example that they can also ally with each other. Of course, if we do ally with everyone, there will still be threats from insects and mechanoids and that type of thing. Um, Manhunter packs, that's definitely a big concern. But what a great start to say where we started today was was fairly terrible. If you do have any other fairly minor mod suggestions that will slot nicely into this mod pack, perhaps something I've I've glaringly missed that would otherwise be a perfect addition. I'm all ears, as long as it actually fits in and doesn't break the mod pack like we did with Christmas. I'm alright with that, but I'll have to do some thorough testing around it. In the meantime, though, of course, let's give a big thank you to uh, the executive producer patrons who have stuck with me these past uh, week since we've had uh, January, whatever, since I've had COVID, basically. Content, a little bit, little bit lulled there for a second. Took a couple of days, but we're, I think we're back on track for, for regular stuff. Thank you to Chicken, Uncultured Swine, Scary Scurvy, Queen Bath Mortar, Snowdog TW, Void Angel, Bobs and Dugnut, Castle, Night Rouge, Nildraith, Jexel, Sweetsea, Bigsby, Zevenwolf, Icewolf, Sir Wigglesworth, and of course, everyone else at the executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Thank you for your support to those people. And a thank you as well to Natna, Flom, Uwu, I Eat Shoes, Mr. Meeseeks, Craigon, Krobe, Francesco R, Revan, Axel PJ, Garnuba, Freakin' Satan, Dark Misery TC, Wargaming Dad, Thistress Morana, and Nox, Immortalis as well. 